Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. The portion of God's word that we're going to consider this morning is from John chapter 6, verses 25 to 40, and verses 47 to 59. I'll read those verses for you now. When they found Jesus on the other side of the lake, they asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw the signs I performed, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him God the Father has placed his seal of approval. Then they asked him, What must we do to do the works God requires? Jesus answered, The work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. So they asked him, What sign then will you give that we may see it and believe you? What will you do? Our ancestors ate the man in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, it was not Moses who, gave, who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, always give us this bread. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But as I told you, you have seen me, and still you do not believe. All those the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I shall lose none of all those he has given me, but raise them up at the last day. For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the man in the wilderness, yet they died. But here is the bread that comes down from heaven, which anyone may eat and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I give for the life of the world. And the Jews began to argue sharply among themselves, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? And Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your ancestors ate manna and died. But whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. He said this while teaching in the, in the synagogue in Capernaum. This is the word of our Lord. As we get meditation on that word, let's pray. Lord, we've come together again for another meal of you, the bread of life. So fill us, satisfy us, now and always. In your name we pray. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, recently I had another pastor say to me, food is one of the great equalizers in life. He said this because, well, everyone needs to eat food. Everyone has an opinion on food, and you can't tell anyone their opinion on food is wrong, because, you know, it is their opinion. There's another thing that, that brings a universal connection with food. And that is, no matter how much you love your favorite meal, no matter how much you eat in one given meal, in one sitting, you are going to get hungry again and you're going to need to eat some more. We get to talk about food today because Jesus said, I am the bread of life. This is the first of Jesus' I am statements that he makes. He makes it Actually, on the heels, the, the day after he had fed more than 5,000 people, and he was actually teaching them based on what had happened. 
You see, the crowds went to great lengths to find Jesus the day after he had fed them and filled their bellies with bread. But Jesus knew exactly why they were there. He says, very truly, I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw the signs I performed, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. That's why they went after Jesus. That's why they were pursuing him. That's why they say, hey, Rabbi, where'd you go? Because actually Jesus knew what was in their hearts. You see, they had it in mind that they would force Jesus to become their king, their bread king, so that he could feed them every single day and keep their bellies full. Well, that's not why Jesus came. No, so, you hear this as Jesus starts off talking about food. Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him God the Father has placed his seal of approval. Well, it piqued their interest. You're talking about food. We came for food. We want food in our bellies. Uh, so they ask, what must we do to do the works God requires? Jesus answers, the work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. We can't eat that, Jesus. So they challenge him. They challenge him saying this, what sign then will you give that we may see it and believe you? What will you do? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. It was a challenge that really showed just how short-term their memories were. I mean, manna, manna sounds good. They had that nice long-term memory thinking back to when God fed miraculously the Israelites for 40 years as they wandered the wilderness, and manna is described as this bread that's like sweetened with honey. Man, that sounds kind of good. But they completely forgot what just happened the day before. Because the day before, Jesus had taken just a few small loaves of bread, a couple of fish, and he fed more than 5,000 people so that they had their fill. They were satisfied. They went home happy. Not hungry. Right. Seems they've forgotten that. And they had forgotten that it wasn't Moses who had given this manna from heaven, but it was God. And it seems that they had forgotten that even during that time of the 40 years, that the Israelites actually complained about the manna. They, they called it detestable, miserable bread. And then what's even more, as Jesus points out, is, yep, your ancestors had their fill of manna for 40 years, and guess what? They died. They had forgotten that this food that they were looking to fill their bellies with, it was not enough. But come on, Jesus, give us something to fill our bellies. Can we hear ourselves in that challenge, in that complaint? Come on, Jesus, give me something. You want me to worship you? You want me to praise you? Hey, that's all fine and good. But what are you going to do for me? What are you going to give me? Give me something that satisfies. Give me something like what you did for those Israelites. You know, bread from heaven. And you know what God responds? He actually gives all of us, believer or non-believer, daily bread. That he gives you the life that you live every single day in terms of the fact that your brain is functioning, your, your lungs are working, your heart is beeping, beating, and, and you get up. You go to work. You have the strength to work. You have the strength to do your studies and your schoolwork. You have the strength to parent and to do all your responsibilities. And then he gives you the paychecks that you need, the money, the income, the retirement fund, whatever it is, so that you can go to the grocery store that even though uh, not everything is fully stocked, there's still a ton of stuff there to buy and to eat every single day. And in fact, you don't even just have what you need for the day. You all have enough for like two weeks of quarantine now. You have more than just your daily bread. And then we complain, you know, that's kind of boring. Though. Bread is boring. It's just bread. You know what? 
Jesus, if that's all you're going to offer me, you're just too white bread. You're too common. You're too plain. I want something better. I want something with more variety. I want something to, to delight my palate. And so we go and seek something else that satisfies. We think Jesus is just too white bread, too plain, too ordinary, too simple. We go seek it somewhere else. And maybe we start going the, the good route. We start going after things to fill our lives, like work, our vocation. You know, work is a good gift from God given in a perfect world, and we rightly find satisfaction in completing work, doing work, but yet at the same time, there's always another project. The work is never actually done, and the satisfaction goes away. We try to find satisfaction and fulfillment out of family and friends. And then we go to them and then we put our time and our effort and our energy into them. And this is a good thing. These are companions that God has given us on earth. But then they don't come through for us. They're not there when we want them there. That we put all our time and effort into them to make them happy. And you know what? They're not happy. And then... You're left empty one more time. So then we go the non-healthy route, which really both, both options are not healthy, and we go to the junk food. We go to the fast food, we go to the comfort food, we go and we indulge. We, we eat the things that are forbidden, the things we know we shouldn't eat, and we do it because we want that rush of endorphins that comes from eating the things that we know are forbidden and just to get that enjoyment. And so, that's what we do. We take the heaping helping of losing our temper. Or we munch on that, that juicy piece of gossip. Or we pop into our mouths that snack of a website click. And it feels good for a moment. It feels good to lose your temper and to just let it all go just for a minute to yell to your heart's content. It feels good when you think about that piece of gossip, how that person really, man, they are so bad, I am so much better than they are. Or to try to feast on that website of lustful thoughts, adulterous images, and maybe for a minute, you're satisfied, you feel full, but you're quickly empty once again. You've taken in spiritual junk food, put on spiritual calories, and now you carry the guilt of having taken that all in, of having done those things, and you're still not satisfied. Anything we try to fill our lives with, whether it's good, healthy fruit, the healthy vegetables, of work and family and friends, or whether it's the, the spiritual junk food and overindulging in the comfort food of, of, of losing our temper or, or gossip or, 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 or pornography, whatever it is, these things never satisfy. They may fill us up for a minute, but then quickly we find ourselves empty. And what's worse is that just like the ancestors of the Israelites, that is, they ate men and yet they died, so also if we just take in these diets, of whether it's the, the vegetables of good works or the junk food of sin, in the end we will still die. If that is our diet, if that is all we consume, we will be separated from God forever. Eternal death. So Jesus offers us something better. Jesus offers us something that truly fills us up and leaves us satisfied. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Jesus is the true bread come down from heaven, the only one who could ever do this. That's why he says, I am. I am who I am. I am the God from all eternity. I am the God who was, who is, who is to come. That eternal nature that I have come down from heaven and I am right here, right now for you. And I 
fulfill. I fill you up with all the works that I have done. I fill you up by doing every right and good thing. Those are the vegetables of the good works. And Jesus has accomplished every single one of them. And Jesus says, I take away from you all the, the, the spiritual poundage that you have gained through the sinful indulgences that you have taken in. I have shed that all off as I took it on me, as I gave my body up on the cross. I sacrificed myself for you. The only person who could make this count, who could live that life for us and die that death for us and make it count for everyone is only God. Only Jesus, only the bread of life. And so because he has done this, we get to live forever. He stands as one approved by God the Father, the one who he says, yep, has the seal of approval. We heard it before, we've heard it two times in Jesus' ministry, where God has said, this is my son whom I love with him, I am well pleased and by the very fact that just as we celebrated two weeks ago on Easter Sunday that Christ is risen, we know that this is the approval of God. Yes, your sins have been paid for. All the spiritual, sinful junk food that you have taken in is gone, and you are filled up instead with all the healthy vegetables of Jesus' good works, completely full, completely satisfied. This bread is my flesh, Jesus says, which I give for the life of the world. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. Jesus fully satisfies. Jesus gives us life because he is the bread of life. So it's great that we know Jesus is the bread of life, but how do we take that in? How do we eat the bread of life? Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, the one who believes has eternal life. Jesus does not tell us to literally eat him like a literal piece of bread, but believe in him. You consume him by believing in him. You consume him by taking in everything he has done. So truly, we are eating the bread of life when we come and worship we are munching on Jesus, chewing on him when we study God's word, the Bible. We are taking in a, a snack of the bread of life whenever we read a, a, a devotion out of meditations or one of the little email devotions from our church body or, or watch a Time of Grace video. Thus, all of this is eating and consuming, feeding on the bread of life through which God gives us eternal life to live with him forever, to raise us up on the last day, to put us in fellowship with him. So when you are tempted to fill your life with either the vegetables of good works or the junk food of sin, trying to make your life being full and satisfied by these things, Jesus says, take a bite out of him. Eat him. Consume him. And if you're looking at him saying, well, Jesus, I know your story. I know who you are. You're kind of just, you're too white bread for me. You're too generic. You're too plain. I know the stories. Well, yeah. There are stories you know about Jesus. There are stories that are your go-to comfort food of Jesus. The ones that you come back to week in, week out, and they build you up. They satisfy you, and they fill you, and they keep you filled. But if you're thinking Jesus is just too white bread, he's just too plain, well then you need to look at the menu of the Bible. You need to dive into the word of God, you need to look into there, because all of it is written about Jesus, the bread of life. All of it is about what he has done to save us. And so maybe you look through the Bible and you say, well, you know, I haven't read that book in a while, I haven't studied that section, I can't even remember if I ever have. Well then try something new and take in all these different varieties and flavors of the bread of life, because God has given you so much in there, you will never grow tired of it, you will never grow weary of it. In fact, you will eat it, and you will be satisfied. You will be full, and you will not go hungry again. And after we've taken in the bread of life, 
share that meal with others. Give them that same bread that fills you up and satisfies you. Give them the same thing you have, a God. A God who has no beginning, who has no end, the great I am. Give them a God who has lived perfection for them, who gives them a life completely full and satisfied, just as he said it is finished, and a God who has removed from us every single sinful indulgence, sinful spiritual junk food we have taken in. And know that it is gone forever. Give someone else, invite them to share in the meal you have, that they can consume the bread of life, the great I am, Jesus. Because when we take him in, when we eat him, when we feed on him, he gives us eternal life, he fully satisfies us, and we never go hungry. Amen. The peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen.